Good morning, good morning, good morning. For this is the day the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Welcome to Kingdom Worship Center. On behalf of our pastors, Bishop Greg and Pastor Tanya Dennis, we thank you for choosing to worship with us online today. Service will begin shortly. Our announcements are as follow. Mocha Moms Mingle will be Saturday, September the 12th at 11 a.m. Attention, attention, attention. Essential worshipers, beginning September the 13th, we will be having in-person limited production services for all essential worshipers at our Towson location. That's right, this is limited. Please search your email for more information. Registration is free. Kingdom Family Life Renewal Conference and Consecration will be held on Saturday, September 19th at 10 a.m. This event will be in person as well as live stream. You can register via eBright free of charge. Our leadership training will be held on October the 10th from 9.30 a.m. to 2 p.m. Our theme for this year will be unifying the whole team for Kingdom Impact. Join Abundant Life Ministries for a Kingdom Life bi-weekly Monday event at 6 p.m. Sessions will be held via Zoom. Our presenters will touch on how faith and mental health will help us with strategies and how we can cope and overcome. Registration is free. Register by the link on your screen to obtain the meeting information. Do you miss early morning service? Come join our Kingdom Outdoor Service held at our Columbia campus on 2nd and 4th Sundays, weather permitting, at 8.30 a.m. Please remember to bring your lawn chair and wear your mask as we are practicing social distancing. Kingdom Worship Center Small Group is a great way for our members and friends to come together to engage intentionally on a regular basis for the purpose of joining God's mission together. If you need more information on your small group, please email info at kingdomworshipcenter.org and we will get you more information. Kingdom family, if you have not yet picked up your free anointing oil, please email info at kingdomworshipcenter.org to reserve your bottle and schedule your time to pick up at either our Towson or Columbia campus. If this is your first time joining us in service and you have a prayer request or even a praise report, please send us an email to prophetmen at kingdomworshipcenter.org. That's P-R-O-P-H-E-T-M-I-N at kingdomworshipcenter.org Just so you stay connected and to get updated information, please stay connected to our Twitter and Instagram at KWC Maryland. 
You can also like our Facebook page at Kingdom Worship Center and subscribe to our YouTube channel at Kingdom Worship Center Media. Good morning, for this is the day the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Welcome to Kingdom Worship Center. On behalf of our pastors, Bishop Greg and Pastor Tanya Dennis, we thank you for choosing to worship with us online today. Service will begin shortly. Our announcements are as follows. Mocha Moms Mingle will be Saturday, September the 12th at 11 a.m. Attention, attention, attention. Essential worshipers, beginning September the 13th, we will be having in-person limited production services for all essential worshipers at our Towson location. That's right. This is limited. Please search your email for more information. Registration is free. Kingdom Family Life Renewal Conference and Consecration will be held on Saturday, September 19th at 10 a.m. This event will be in person as well as live stream. You can register via eBright free of charge. Our leadership training will be held on October the 10th from 9.30 a.m. to 2 p.m. Our theme for this year will be unifying the whole team for Kingdom Impact. Join Abundant Life Ministries for a Kingdom Life bi-weekly Monday event at 6 p.m. Sessions will be held via Zoom. Our presenters will touch on how faith and mental health will help us with strategies and how we can cope and overcome. Registration is free. Register by the link on your screen to obtain the meeting information. Do you miss early morning service? Come join our Kingdom Outdoor Service held at our Columbia campus on second and fourth Sundays, weather permitting, at 8.30 a.m. Please remember to bring your lawn chair and wear your mask as we are practicing social distancing. Kingdom Worship Center Small Group is a great way for our members and friends to come together to engage intentionally on a regular basis for the purpose of joining God's mission together. If you need more information on your small group, please email info at kingdomworshipcenter.org and we will get you more information. Kingdom family, if you have not yet picked up your free anointing oil, 
please email info at kingdomworshipcenter.org to reserve your bottle and schedule your time to pick up at either our Towson or Columbia campus. If this is your first time joining us in service and you have a prayer request or even a praise report, please send us an email to prophetmen at kingdomworshipcenter.org. That's P-R-O-P-H-E-T-M-I-N at kingdomworshipcenter.org. Just so you stay connected and to get updated information, please stay connected to our Twitter and Instagram at KWC Maryland. You can also like our Facebook page at Kingdom Worship Center and subscribe to our YouTube channel at Kingdom Worship Center Media. like you. Thank you, Jesus. You are the God of the universe, but you are also Emmanuel. You're the God of my heart. And somewhere in between, you always meet us. When we're lost, you lead us and guide us into all truth. You hold us together. You keep us steady. You, you direct us. You make crooked ways straight. And so, God, we thank you. And right now, on this morning, God, we lean in. It doesn't matter if we're here in this building physically, God, or we're home watching across the screen. God, we want to feel your presence. We can't make it without your presence. We can't do anything without your presence. Your presence has peace. Your presence has joy. Your presence has our strength. So God, we're asking right now. We're not holding anything back. So we pray we need all of you right now, Jesus. So make your place here. Make your home here. Dwell here. Live here. Stay here. Right where we are. Right where we are. Right now, even if you're watching on the screen, just lift your hands. Just lift your hands. God, we invite you in. We invite you in. This just isn't a moment. This just isn't in a moment that's going to happen on the screen, but this is going to be a moment in eternity. This is a moment established by heaven, and it's going to live for eternity. God, have your way. We are yielded people. We are a, a, a surrendered people. And so, God, we say, have your way. God, have your way. We say, God, have your way. We say, God, have your way. Right now, God, have your way. Have your way. Have your way in our hearts. Have your way in our homes. Have your way in our way in our emotions. Have your way in our minds in the way that we think. God, have your way in our deeds. God, we want to be what you just what you want us to be. So God, we are surrendered. We are surrendered, totally surrendered, totally surrendered, without hesitation, with no resistance. We are totally surrendered. Hallelujah. We give it all to you, God. We give it all to you, God. We give it all to you. 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 Oh God, hallelujah, our intentions, our agendas, we give it all to you. Our desires and our wants, we give it all over to you. Woo. Hey God, hey. Woo. Woo. It's all you. It's all you. 
It's yours, it's yours, it's yours, it's yours. It's yours, it's yours, it's yours. There is no way but your way. There is no way but your way. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Sing it.
And it's just for who you are and all of your glory. My heart sings holy, holy. My heart sings holy, holy. That's what describes your character. That's why you never fail us. Because you're holy. Because you're a man of your word. Holy, holy. heaven and say my heart sings holy holy say holy 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 holy
just open up your mouth and begin to worship your holy God. Worship a holy God. Worship a holy God. sovereignty we thank you for your goodness it is because of your goodness Lord that we're still even in the land of the living thank you for being such a holy God and God we declare on this morning that we surrender to your will not our will but God your will be done thank you for being a just God thank you for being a loving kind God a merciful God, a passionate God. Thank you for being our wonderful Savior, our Redeemer. Lord, thank you for reconciling us to yourself. And we honor you so much on this morning. We pray, Lord, that he that have an ear would hear what the Spirit is saying to the church and cause us not just to be hearers of your word, but God, we need to be transformed into doers of your word. 
And God, make us living epistles. Make us living epistles. Hallelujah. Just like the Word became flesh, God caused our flesh to become Word. And we thank you for it and we honor you for this. We pray, Lord, that he that have an ear would hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. And we declare this morning that we are your Word. And we glorify you for the same. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God bless you, Kingdom family. It is so good to be with you on this morning. The Lord has been good to us. The Lord has been good to us. The Lord has been good to us. The old church would say he's been better to me than I've actually been to myself. And I want to declare to us this morning that God is so good to you. Hallelujah. The old, there was an old church that used, used, to, uh, used to sing a song that said, God is so good. God is so good. God is so good. He's been good to me. Hallelujah. I, I'm sorry. Um, but God is good. God has been good. God has been good. God has been good to us. And I honor him for who he is to us. Morning by morning by morning by morning by morning. Hallelujah, you've seen and you've witnessed brand new mercies. And if you're like me, you're grateful for brand new mercies. And so we thank God for his faithfulness. Hallelujah. I want to talk to us just for a little while this morning. First of all, let me say before we get into the word, I need to say God bless you to all of you. And I miss seeing you and your faces and pray that we would have an opportunity to come together soon. Some of you know this coming week uh, or today, some of us will be, have the opportunity to come together in worship uh, as we record our services live together with our studio audience. And so we pray that you would definitely come out and be a part of it. There is going to be a registration that's, that's there so that we can make sure that we're not uh, over, uh, we have too many persons inside. We're not crossing our capacity settings and we want to make sure that that's not happening so that we can make sure everyone is safe. Hallelujah. I would that you uh, prosper and be in health even as your soul doth prosper. I want to uh, speak to us for a moment this, this morning uh, from the subject, make room. Uh, look at your neighbor, it's your spouse, I hope it is this morning, and just tell them or your child, make room, make room, make room, make room, make room. Um, I, I am, I am not a pack rat. I don't, I don't, I don't do well with a lot of stuff. A lot of stuff around me. Um, I don't, I don't like a lot of boxes and a lot of, of stuff that we can get rid of. Um, I'm one who once I have some things, if I know I can discard it, I will. That's a word for somebody already. If I know I can discard it, I will. And so um, I, because of that, I, I love to have opportunity in my house and where I and in my dwelling place, room for whatever's next. Good God Almighty. And I feel like this morning ministering to somebody that because you've been consistent, God is now asking you to make room. Ah, oh, God. And some of us have found ourselves in a place where we've been consistent. We have depend on God. We've been leaning on God. We've been faithful in what we've been called to do. You've been faithful in your assignment. You've been faithfully dedicated to the things of God, the working of God. And here it is now that you're wondering with everything that's been happening in this life, what's next for you? Let me tell you, can I prophesy to you this morning that what is next for you is that you need to begin to make some room room for the promises of God, which are yea and amen to be manifested in your life. I need us to realize that though we've had hard seasons and dark places and all of those things have been happening in our lives, that this does not cease the promises of God from being manifested in the life of the people of God. There are the promises of God. Every promise in him is yea and amen. I need to say it again. Every promise in him is yea 
and amen. Yes, and it's going to happen. So be it. It's manifesting itself in your life. Hallelujah. And so I believe that not only for my life, but I believe it for your life, that God's promises are nigh thee. Good God Almighty. And I know that we're still in the midst of a turbulent season, but it has not stopped the promises of God. God's promises are sure. Good God Almighty. And I believe it so much for our life. I got to get into the word. But one of the things that we have to make sure that we're doing is we have to make sure that we are really trusting God for the promises that are in our lives. Hallelujah. Somebody just declare, say, I trust him. I trust him. I trust him. Uh, I need to I want to start our, our reading of scripture this this uh, morning, actually, in a passage of scripture that we normally use uh, during funeral services, during home going services. And uh, it's out of uh, John, St. John, the 14th chapter. And uh, I did not mark this one in my uh, notes here, uh, but but it's, it's one that you are very familiar with. Uh, it says very simply, it says this. Uh, St. John chapter 14, it says, let not your heart be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. Good God Almighty. In my father's house are many mansions. Hallelujah. I like the King James Version. Some of the newer translations says are many rooms, but I like many mansions. I don't know about you, uh, but are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you and I'm going to set it up for you. Good God Almighty. Woo! Good God, in my father's house, I've already made space for you. Good God Almighty. And I'm going to prepare and make sure what I have promised you and what is for you will be ready for you. Good God Almighty. I need us to believe and to understand that God is not slack concerning his promises. And he is making sure that not only is there room, but he's making sure that the space is tailored for you. Good God Almighty. I don't know about you and I don't know how happy you are about it but can you just be happy for a little while for a God who tailors your spaces who makes sure that it's prepared not just for others but there's a space that has been prepared for you as the believer and God is not slack he is ready to perform everything he said about you hallelujah okay let me okay I got uh St. John 14 this is pastor scripture is one that's really amazing for, for me let not the heart be troubled. Now you understand, like I do, that here in this passage when he says, let not your heart be troubled, he is saying that you are in a place where your soul, if you're not careful, will get the best of you. Good God Almighty. When you look at everything that's happening around you, your soul can get the best of you. But he says, don't let your heart take advantage of you in this moment. Don't let your heart get the better of you in this moment. Let not your heart be troubled. Believe in God. Good I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I said the other day I was going to try to stop clapping so much because I hear it in my mic. Ha, believe in God. Believe in God. Let not your heart be troubled. Believe in God. Hallelujah. And if you believe in God, believe also in me because I, in my father's house, I, there's already rooms that have already been established for you. Good God Almighty. And if it were not so, I would have told you I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go. That means I'm coming back to come get you. Good God Almighty. All right. Ah, and whether I go, you know, the way I go, you know, all right. And Thomas said, I'm in verse five. And Thomas said unto him, Lord, we know not where you're going and we don't even know how to get there. We don't know the way. And Jesus utters these words. He says, I am the way, the truth and the life. See, if there's one way to make sure that your heart doesn't become troubled, it is to believe what you know about God already. Believe what God says about himself. So you've got to make sure, hallelujah, that when your heart is becoming overwhelmed, that you realize and that you begin to cognitively think about. He's the way, he's the truth, and he is the life. And when I think about him being the way, the truth, and the life, and my heart being troubled, it displaced my troubled heart, good God Almighty, because I'm considering who he is and what he's capable of, good God Almighty. Now, now, okay, oh, let's, let, I got to go through some scripture. This is, this is going to take, this is going to take a while, y'all, but I just, I just don't have the time just to go through all of this. Somebody said, take your time, preacher, take your time. All right. 
um, y'all don't really want me to take my time uh, because um, that could be a while. Uh, but but OK, let not your heart be troubled. You must be God be also with me. Ah, ah God. And, and what I love about it is is is. Is what happens also, and I'm, I'm gonna get to some things, but what also happens in John 14 is down in verse 13 of John 14, is that then Jesus also sets an expectation for you whose hearts are no longer troubled. Check it out. When your heart has left, good God, trouble, he then expects you to do greater works. Check it out. Check it out. He expects from you now to do more than what he accomplished. Good God Almighty. Because now you're no longer in the place where you should have troubled hearts. Mm. OK. All right. All right. All right. Because your belief is in God. And what do you know about God since your belief is in God? I know he's the way he is the truth and he is the life. Is, does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. All right. It, uh, uh, and so uh, I, I've got so much. So so f so for the believer, it is important for us to make sure that if you go to Philippians uh, one and six, it says being confident of this very thing that he which has begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. And what I want us to, uh, to understand and to believe, hear, hear this please for me real quick, is that the scripture says again, Philippians uh, 1, uh, chapter 6, it says, being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work, where? In you, in you. He has begun a good work in you, will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. And, and could it be that some of our challenges with our hearts being troubled is because we've been looking for work outside of us? Oh God, and that our hearts have become troubled because I've been looking from without. But what God's been really doing, he's been up to something from within. Good God Almighty. And so if I look at my inward work, then I can speak to the heart and say, you can't be troubled. Good God Almighty. You can't let things that are from without trouble that which is within. Good God Almighty. Oh God, because I'm being confident that he who had begun. Good God Almighty. He that had begun this good work inside of me is able to perform it. Is able to perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Uh, so, so it is important for us now to make sure that we are no longer distracted by that which comes from without. No longer distracted by that which comes from without. I am no longer distracted by that which comes from without because I have so much confidence about that, about he who is within me. All right. He who is within me gives me another measure of confidence where I am no longer uh, worried about the things that happen around me. I hope this makes sense. Uh, let me let me let me let me hasten on. So so I'm in the place wherefore I am in Matthew six, uh, verse thirty through thirty four. If y'all if you would with me, wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you? Come on, y'all. All right. Uh, if, oh, ye of little faith. Uh, therefore, take no thought, saying, what shall we eat or what shall we drink or with all shall we be clothed? Uh, for after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly father knoweth that ye have need of all of these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. Take therefore no thought. For tomorrow, for tomorrow shall uh, take thought for its uh, for the things it's of itself sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. So don't be concerned about the evil that's happening around you. Good God Almighty, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and let God do what God does. Good. Oh my God. Lord, I almost clapped again. Can I declare it again? Let God do what God does. Let God work it out. Let God handle the issue. Let God perform the way only God can perform. I can only do so much 
much with my education. I can only do so much with my wit. I can only do so much with my money. I can only do so much with my connections. But if you allow Christ in me to do what Christ can do, could God, with God, could God Almighty, all things become possible to them that believe. Yeah. Woo! Okay, I'm sorry, I'm getting so excited. Uh, and I'm just quoting scripture that everybody knows. I know. I know. First, uh, or not first, Colossians 1, uh, Colossians 1, 26 through 29. Y'all all right? I hope you're okay, because I'm going through all of this real quick. It says this, even the mystery which hath been hid from ages and from generations, but now is made manifest to his saints, to whom God would make known what is the riches of his glory in this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Good God Almighty. Which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Your hope, good God, of glory is Christ who is inside of you, whom we preach, warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom, that we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus, whereunto I also labor, striving according to his working, which worketh in me mightily. Listen. Who could I don't know. We don't preach the last that verse 29, that last clause that much. But hear this very clearly that when you work his work, he will work it with you. You don't work the work of Christ by yourself. Good God Almighty. He joins in his faithful assignment. That's how you know greater works you shall do because you ain't doing it. He's doing it for you, through you, good God, and with you. Good God Almighty. I'm so sorry that I'm so much more excited than everybody else. Ah, so here it is that as we go through these passages of scripture, then we understand that Christ in us becomes our hope. Our hope. And you must remember that when you begin to do the work of God, here, here comes where you make room. Hear me just for a second. When you do the work of God, God will not forget your contribution. Da -da -da -da. Da -da -da. I'm trying to tell you, good God, I'm so sorry. Uh, Brian is going to get me for that. Uh, but, but here it is where God does not forget that you have put your hand to the plow. God does not forget. And it's amazing to me now, now, now I want you to just just wrestle with this. It's amazing that God doesn't forget the contribution you made. But at the same time, you can't do anything to merit God's grace, which is sufficient to help you while you're doing it. Good God about it. So even though I do it uh, and he helps me with it uh, and he won't forget that I did it. He also has for me a grace to help me do it. Good God about it that I can't earn. Y'all, good God. I can't do anything to get it. It's just already there, which means to us, it says to us that we have a God. Good God Almighty, who is absolutely, positively gratuitous. Uh, let me say that again. We have a God who is absolutely and positively gratuitous, which means that uh, you know what this is. You know, when you go to uh, uh, the Cheesecake Factory, maybe that I'll name that place or wherever you go to to, to eat. It might be uh, who knows uh, Georgia Peach here in Baltimore. And when you go there after you get your food, you make a determination what type of gratuity you're going to give. And most of us give gratuity based upon the service we've received, yeah. right? If you haven't given me great services, huh, it impacts the gratuity that you actually have. Yeah. If you haven't been meeting my need, it impacts what type of gratuity I leave for you. But the way God operates, good God Almighty, excuse me, I'm getting happy. The way God operates is that his grace is absolutely gratuitous, which means that I give you grace regardless of how you act. Y'all, good God. I give you grace grace regardless of how you treated me. I give you grace regardless because you can't merit what I have for you. Good God Almighty. You can't do anything to earn what I have for you. It is absolutely gratuitous. I'm going to give you this whether you deserve it or not. Mm. Lord, thank you, Jesus. Okay, let's, let's keep moving. Uh, uh, Y'all all right? I know. I know. I know. Slow down, Greg Dennis. Slow down. I'm all right, 
Thank you. Uh, uh, 2 Corinthians 9. I didn't read this, did I? 2 Corinthians uh, 9, verse 6 to 8. And it says, it says this. Now, this is amazing because this is a scripture we normally use uh, uh, for times of giving. We normally use this scripture, you know, when, when somebody, when it's about time for offering time, people begin to grab. This is one of the passages we grab and we begin to read that. Uh, but I want, I want to read this for you. It says, but this I say, he which soweth sparingly shall also reap sparingly. Mm -hmm. Or shall reap also sparingly. And he which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Mm -hmm. Every man according as he's purpose in his heart. So let him give not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. Mm, right? That's where we stop normally when we give. And God is able to make all grace abound towards you. Here's what I need you to hear. And God, see, when you begin to give and you begin to sow and you begin to allow, I'm not just talking money, y'all. I'm talking about your life. I'm talking about your service. I'm talking about your do it, your duty. I'm talking about how you honor God in your walk. I'm talking about your commitment to God. And you begin to be gratuitous. You begin to be a bountiful rather in that you begin to be generous in how you're committed to God, generous in how you serve God, generous in, in how you love on God, generous in how you love others for the cause of God. And the Bible says, and when you begin to give in this way where you're giving bountifully, he says, you shall also reap bountifully. Good God. Mind. And God is able to make all grace abound towards you that ye always. Here's the thing. Having all sufficiency in all things may abound to every good work. Which means that what God is willing to do is that if you're willing to do a good work, he's willing to sponsor it. Oh, my goodness. I'm going to say that again. I got to say, y'all, can I say it again? I, well, y'all didn't say anything. So he is, is if you are willing to do a good work, God is willing to sponsor it. Good. God Almighty. And could it be that some of our challenges in this season have been is that we have been exhausted from good works. And now we're trying to figure out, God, where, where are you? And God is saying, I'm still here and I'm sponsoring all your good works. Good Lord. Have mercy. OK, let's let's keep moving. Uh, so he's, he's sponsoring all the good uh, I'm, I'm going to move fast. I got to get get to part of what where where I know I need to go. And that is the 90 second psalm. I, I, I had this in part of the word on last week, but I need to make sure that we're here. Psalm 92. Psalm 92. And um, I had it in the Bible for a second. Uh, Psalm 92. I'm, I'm going to get happy. Just a warning um, with this uh, passage of scripture. Uh, so y'all just uh, bear with me for a second. Psalm 92. I'm going to start at verse seven. And um, and conclude at the end of that chapter, verse 15. When the wicked spring is a grass and when the workers of iniquity do flourish, it is that they shall be destroyed forever. But thou, O Lord, art most high forevermore. For lo, th mine enemies, O Lord, for lo, th thine enemies shall perish. All the workers of iniquity shall be scattered. But my horn shall exalt like the horn of a unicorn and shall be anointed with fresh oil. Good God. Ooh. Ah, oh, God. Uh, just put it in the chat. Put it wherever you are that there's fresh oil coming to my life. Oh, yeah. uh, come on. You need to declare it. You need to believe it, that there is fresh oil coming to my life. Yeah. That everything that I've gone through has not just by happenstance. I've been committed. I've been dedicated. And now God is releasing in my life 
Fresh oil, good God of mine. Fresh oil, fresh oil, fresh oil. Fresh oil is coming to my life to do who, what God has called me to do and to be who God has called me to be. God, thank you so much for fresh oil, good God of mine. And with this fresh oil, God, you can depend on me being consistent. You can depend on me being committed. You can depend on me being available. You can depend on me, God, uh, fulfilling the assignment at hand. You can depend on me not wavering, God, because this fresh oil, good God Almighty, is causing there to be, uh, for me, is purposing me to make new room in my life for all of the things that you're going to release in my life. Good God Almighty. Lord have mercy. There's about to be a release in the believer's life. Hallelujah. And it's going to start with fresh oil. Hallelujah. This oil is the oil of God that is being poured on the life of the believer. Oh, yeah. Come on, Ooh, hallelujah. Ooh. All right. I shall be anointed with fresh oil. My eye also shall see my desire on my enemies. The things that have been trying to trouble me are about to dissipate. Good Lord, have mercy. The things that have been on my life that have been trying to take me out are about to be taken out. Yeah. Good God Almighty. Why? Because God's got new oil on me. Ooh, good God Almighty. Ah, I wish there was somebody in the chat or in the room who, who would just declare and say, I feel like I'm anointed all over again. I, I believe God's doing something in my life. I, I believe there's a change that's on the horizon. I feel like I'm anointed again. Good God Almighty. Thank you, Lord, for fresh soil. Thank you, Lord, for what you're doing in my life. Thank you, Lord. Ooh, okay, calm down, Greg, calm down. Mine eyes shall also see my desire on mine enemies, and my ears shall hear my desire of the wicked that rise up against me. Hmm. The righteous shall flourish. Before I get to verse 12, let me, let me get this before I go to 12. You know what's amazing? And I, I was thinking about this, I was meditating, I'm just putting, putting pause here for a second. I was meditating about the word of the Lord, like I do, and... Um, while meditating about the word of the Lord, I was amazed because I began to look at how many things that do not have ears, but hear the word of the Lord. Okay. I, was, I, was just, I was just amazed by it, Terry. I was amazed by, I looked again at dry bones. I looked at mountains. I looked at, I looked at situations. I looked at uh, winds. I looked at seas. I looked at all of these things. All, none of these things have ears. But all of these things respond to the articulation, good God Almighty, of the plan of God and the word of God. I want to prophesy to some people with fresh oil on your life that in this season, when you begin to utter the plan of God and the purpose of God, that not only will your neighbor hear you, God, but your struggle will heal you. Your strife will hear you. Your pain will hear you. Your sickness will hear you. Could God, I feel like preaching here that whatever it is that has been oppressing you will hear you. If you would just open your mouth and continue to declare what God has said with this fresh oil on your life, it has no recourse but to hear the word of the Lord. Okay. All right. Let's, let's keep moving. Hmm. The righteous shall flourish like the palm tree he, and he shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon. Hmm. You know, when I, when I read that uh, Terry, I keep looking at Terry because he's the only person I can see he, here in the dark and because he's, <laughs> never mind. <laughs> and while I looked at this, I'm always reminded of how these cedars from Lebanon are all throughout Scripture. You go through the Old Testament, you find cedars always talked about. These, huh, good God Almighty. And what God does is he's comparing what he's going to do in you yeah. to cedars, good God Almighty, that are in Lebanon. Which means, listen, if you live uh, in a row home in Baltimore City, do not plant a cedar from Lebanon in your yard. Because what it's going to do is it's going to take over your house, your neighbor's house, 
and your other neighbor's house because they grow up to over a 50 feet. Y'all not help me in its width and over 80 feet in its height. And they also grow just as deep as they do high. Good God Almighty. And so it's going to cause your foundation to be destroyed. But when God says, I'm going to make you flourish like a cedar. Good God. What he's saying is, I'm going to do something with your foundation. Uh, that others have not seen and I'm going to do something with your branches that others can't compare to and I'm going to make you so sturdy that uh, you'll be able to be something that others use to build on. Good God Almighty. Uh, if you go back to Solomon's house, if, if you go back to the temple, where do we get these things? Well, I need some resources to build. Get cedars. Get your cedars. Your cedars will help you build the temple again and God says I'm going to use you to be that which flourishes is where I can build my house again. Yeah. Where I can build my house again. Hallelujah. He gonna be like those cedars. And when I think of the palm tree, I have no choice. My reference point becomes this day that I'm in. And normally when you begin to read the text, it's safe for us to, to make sure that we try to put ourselves not just in the text in 2020, but try to put yourself in the text in the day of the text. And so, uh, so if, but I had no choice with, because I could not imagine palm trees in, uh, during David's time. So I had to imagine palm trees during the last hurricane that came through, that though winds blew, good God Almighty, it was made to bend. Y'all, good Lord Jesus, I'm here to let you know that what God is doing with you is not only deep, not only huge, not only great, but that when your enemy comes, he will not be able to break you. Good God, the best he'll be able to do is to find out your range of motion. Good God, to find out how flexible you are, but it will not cause you to break. I dare somebody to prophesy to themselves and declare that whatever I'm going through, it will not break me. Good God, it cannot destroy destroy me. It will not hinder the word of God in my life. Yeah. But you got to make room for what God is doing. Yeah. Cedars do not blossom, however, until they are approximately 25 to 30 years old. Mm. What? <laughs> Their flower, the blossom of the cedar, from Lebanon does not come until 25 to 30 years later. So don't be anxious, hallelujah, for your flowers while you're growing. Uh, because what he's doing is making sure that you will be anxious for nothing, but your flowers coming, y'all could. And what I like about the flower is the promise is that regardless of how old you are, mm -hmm. you still gonna flourish. Good God Almighty. There's some people who are on this stream today, watching this message today, who you thought huh, that your season, you thought your purpose, you thought you were late on your assignment, you thought it was time to give up, you were looking for younger people to complete what's been on your heart. They are, I'm sorry, I, I, I know we have a lot of young people and a lot of millennials, and I know we got a, a, a lot of exes that are part of our congregation. We also have a lot of baby boomers, huh, but can I speak to our baby boomers? for a second and just declare to our baby boomers that regardless of where you found yourself is that it doesn't mean that you are not in a place of flourishing that God still has so much for you hallelujah oh God don't give up on the promises of God because you thought your season passed you don't give up on the promises of God because you were in your 60s your 70s or even your 80s don't give up on the promises of God hallelujah because his promises are still sure regardless of our age good God ah, because he is the ancient of days. I, oh God, I felt that in my uh, I felt that in my bones. He's the ancient of days. Uh, he is able to be uh, the God of yesterday and still the God of tomorrow. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Oh, yes. I've got to finish. I've got to finish. 
I've got to finish. I've, I had so much. Make room, make room, make room. Your promise is sure. And what God is promising to do in our lives is to make us like these cedars. Make us like these palm trees. This is your promise. You're going to find out that you're going to blossom. I, got to, I didn't read verse 15. Terry, pray something soft for me. Make me finish while I read the last bit of this verse. If you would, please, sir. They shall spring forth fruit in old age. They shall be fat and flourishing. Hmm. To show that the Lord is upright. He's my rock. And there is no unrighteousness in him. He's holy. And the holiness of God whew, will not allow you to miss your promise. Oh God, I'm going to say that again. The holiness of God will not allow you to miss your promise. Just God. He's a just God. And I like, when I use that word just, I know that normally we ascribe it to justice. He's a just God. And he is a just God, meaning he, he operates in justice. But there's another definition for the word just that, that just always I enjoy. And that is, he's a God of fidelity. He is a God who's committed to you. He's a God who's not going to back up his word. He's going to support you, good God Almighty. And if he told you that he'll do it, then it's coming to pass. Every promise, every promise in him is yea and amen. Yes, faithful is our God. I'm over our time. Let's pray together if you would. Let's look to the Lord. Father, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you for your faithfulness towards us, your commitment towards us. God, there have been times when we have not been consistent. There have been times when we've been exhausted and wanted to throw in the towel. God, there may even have been seasons where we were missing in action. But God, we thank you for remembering the days when we were faithful. And we commit ourselves again to the assignment that you've placed in our hands. Forgive us, Lord, for when we missed the mark. Forgive us, Lord, when we were more caught up in our own assignment and forgive us, Lord, when we were operating as what Matthew 6 would call hypocrites. Those who are always looking for what's in it for them. And you said in your word in Matthew 6 that we would always, that that moment would be our reward. Whatever we could get out of it. So he say, forgive us, Lord, for those times. And thank you for humbling us as we seek your plan and your purpose. And we declare we will execute your heart's desire. And we thank you for every promise that you've given us. Now God, we are committed to make room because what we're about to experience is gonna be greater than anything we've ever had before. I speak it as a truth of God's word in our life that palm trees and the cedars of Lebanon are the only things that can be compared to what you're going to be doing in our lives. Hallelujah. We might bend, but we won't break. And our branches will be strong enough to be trees themselves. Thank you for making us into what you would have us to be. We glorify you for the same. 
Now, if you have not accepted Jesus Christ as your personal savior, this is the day to do it. Give God your heart and crown him Lord of your life. Just confess your sins. The Bible declares that if you confess your sins, he's faithful and just to forgive you and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. And if you and I have been cleansed from all of our unrighteousness, this happens by the blood of Jesus Christ, then that would make us now walking in righteousness. Not our own righteousness, because on our best day, our righteousness is like a filthy rag. But we get to walk in the righteousness of a God who has reconciled us to himself. And so give God your heart. It'll be the best decision you've ever made. He's already made opportunity and space for you. Just accept it. Just acknowledge it. And if you need a church to help you, we, of course, we're here as Kingdom Worship Center to help you walk this out and to disciple you in your faith. Connect with us where it says request prayer or send us an email at info at kingdomworshipcenter.org and we would be glad to reach back out to you and to help you in your walk with Christ. Now, it's time for us to give. Get your cash, get your envelopes, write your check out if you have to. Uh, get your phone or your tablet, whatever it is, or go to your computer, whatever it is that you use to make sure that you are giving today. And we invite you to come and be part of this generous community of God. I walked around this building last week And when walking around the building, I want to knock the back of it out so bad. I also drove around the city not too long ago. Pastor Tanya and I, we were looking at land. And I think it's just time for us to do something for the kingdom of God that is so great. And so help us by being generous givers to do the work of ministry in ways that we have not seen before. And uh, we... We declare that if we know, if if you give to Kingdom Worship Center, we're good stewards over what you have blessed us with. And God is so faithful to us that sometimes we end up with blessings uh, that we have not even known were coming. I was looking the other day, and I'm sorry for the story, but stay with me for a second. I was walking through the building the other day, Terry, and while I was walking through the building, I noticed that one of the blessings that the Lord had given to the ministry was not being used. It was just sitting in storage. It was a blessing, but it was sitting in storage. And while walking through the building and and all this stuff, you know, uh, since we haven't had service here, stuff gets a little dusty. You know, I was sweeping up a couple floors and stuff like that. And while doing that, God said to me, he said, I can't take you to your next place if you don't use what I gave you in this place. Y'all (laughs) could. And I I said, Lord, forgive me. And so I began, I was, but nobody else in the building but me, but I started pulling stuff out of storage so we could make use of what God has blessed us with. So we could show God, not only are we being good stewards over it, but God is not, we don't have uh, enough space. Y'all could God, we we, we need more in order to do. And you've got to be faithful over little for God to make you rule over much. It's his principle. And so I want to I want to declare to you, even during this time of of giving, be faithful over little so that God can make you rule over much. Um, Don't if if you if you are living in an apartment and it's in a studio apartment, clean it. (laughs) You living in a studio apartment, make it nice. If you don't have all the furniture, be faithful over it. Y'all know. If, if, you are, if you've got a roommate, y'all not help me, and, you, and you, you're sharing a room with somebody, clean your half of the room. Be faithful. If you, if you, if, when you wash your dishes, don't throw them in the sink. Don't break them. Y'all, be faithful over little. I, I, I know y'all like, Bishop G, you all in people's business. This makes no sense. No, I'm trying to give you a godly principle of how to live in a place or how to allow God to push you into a place where increase becomes your experience. And it starts with being faithful yeah. over the little that you have because that moves you into becoming rulers over much. Yeah. All right, I've said enough, maybe even too much. God bless you. Thank you so much for being with us on this morning. I pray God's richest blessings upon you. May the blessings of the Lord make you rich and he add no sorrow to your life. 
God bless you. Enjoy your week. We pray that today's message touched you like no other message, and we're so excited that you took the time to join us today. Thank you. Be blessed. Have a great week. Remember, God loves you even in this. That's right. God loves you even in this. Have a great week.